Our home editor, Jason Farrell, joins this new team called Medic3 as they race through London on life-saving missions. His reports contain some flashing images. Take the next left. Air ambulance staff don't always travel by helicopter. In London, it's not possible after dark. You follow the road round to the right. Another misconception is that they're designed to quickly shift people back to hospital. And then in 300 metres, we'll be turning right. But this is expertise racing to the sea. John and Sam hope that they can save lives on the spot. Mileage was 11.3, we are patient side. We've arrived at a road traffic accident. Hi, guys. I'm John, this is Sam, just coming with one of the paramedics. Wiggle your toes. It's OK, it's OK. Yeah. And where does it hurt here? There you go. It was Bye. thought a patient was having breathing difficulties, but in fact he's OK and can be looked after by the ambulance staff. Roughly about one in a 1,000 calls will have, um, will have the need uh, for an advanced trauma team. And these are patients that either won't survive to hospital or will do significantly worse without the advanced interventions that we can bring. A most common call, sadly, in London is uh, shootings and stabbing, so what we call penetrating trauma. Continue straight on at these lights. What happens next is two jobs come in almost at once. When the road splits, you'll be taking the left-hand fork straight on. Across London, two lives hang in the balance. 100, second exit, 12 o'clock. Before now, London's air ambulance only had one vehicle operating at night and would have to choose. But with this new team, one can go to a stabbing in East London while we head towards someone who's had a dangerous fall. It's estimated this one extra team could save hundreds of lives this winter. Yeah, we've got a car behind those vehicles. Yeah. It's a serious head injury. A street emergency room is set up. Um, I think I'll go straight for the tube if you chuck us that. Yeah. We've agreed not to show anything that might identify the patient, but early interventions done, she's taken to hospital. On what's called a code black, a full trauma team is waiting in surgery. John provides care in the ambulance and Sam follows. The ambulance crew on scene were all doing a fantastic job when we got there, but she was unconscious and she was so deeply unconscious that she actually wasn't managing to maintain her own airway. So she needed intubation, she needed an anaesthetic outside of hospital, which is something that the road ambulance is not able to give her. This is the most the stressful job I've observed. They negotiate London with the skill of rally drivers, then immediately switch to lifesavers. And sadly, in this case, John had the added burden of telling family members the patient wasn't going to make it. You do your job and you're there for the patient, you're there for that patient's family, but you take some of it home with you because you have to give a little bit of yourself when you talk to these families and you, and you look after these patients because otherwise you're not doing the job right. And that layers up over time. And I think one of the things about COVID and this last 20 months in healthcare has been all everybody's having these things, but no one's had that time to process and release that pressure. But life goes on, and so does saving lives. The next call could come at any moment. Ready to go again. Jason Farrell, Sky News.